Welcome to worship today on the 4th of July. I hope you're finding a way not only to celebrate our country, but also to celebrate freedom and recognize the responsibilities we have with that freedom. Today in worship, we have a guest preacher, the Reverend Paula Tim, and she is gonna share with us a word about rest and recreation. And I pray it will bless you today, and I'm super grateful for her, for Paula being a part of our worship today. Good morning, and welcome to worship with us at Eden Prairie United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Paula Fanamel Tim, and it is my pleasure to join you in the celebration of worship this 4th of July. Would you please join me in the call to worship? Welcome to worship this morning. Even though it is summertime, our lives are crowded and rushed. Come into this time of peace and quiet. We need to rest in God's word. God's love is with you. God will give you rest and refresh your souls. Thanks be to God for this breakaway time. Amen. Please join me in singing our opening song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let us pray. Lord, today we recall your faithfulness. Thank you that you walk with us every day, that you are with us always. We proclaim that your promises are true and your goodness and love never fail. In this moment, we come to worship and adore you with our whole being. We proclaim that you are the Holy One, the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Your beauty and majesty are beyond compare. On this day, we join with all those who worship from generations past and present, and with all the angels that sing in heaven your greatness and splendor. Calm our hearts and our minds as we rest in your presence this day. Amen. Hear now the scripture from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 8 through 11 from the Contemporary English Bible. Remember the Sabbath day and treat it as holy. Six days you may work and do all your tasks, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Do not do any work on it. Not you, your sons or daughters, your male or female servants, your animals or the immigrant living with you. Because the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything that is in them in six days, but rested on the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in singing, It Is Well With My Soul.
do you rest? How do you find peace? How do you pause in your life? Often when we think of rest, we think of going to sleep at night and then waking up in the morning with a restful attitude. Sometimes sleep isn't that easy for all of us to achieve, but indeed you want to feel rested when you wake up. In order to keep your time and your rhythm in your life, it is important that you find regular ways to rest. Beyond just taking a nap, rest is more than just sleep. Now, I'm sure that you've all been driving along the road and seen those roadside rest signs that say rest area ahead. And whether you're pulling over to use the bathroom or to stretch your legs or to walk the dog or to let the kids run or to answer a phone call or send a text message, any or all of those reasons are very good for you to pause and rest, take a break from driving so that you can pay attention to something else. What causes us to pause in our daily lives? What causes us to stop? and rest. Sometimes we can be so busy with what's going on, we fill our lives up with thing after thing on our schedule, and we don't include space for rest. Today we will explore different ways that we can find our Sabbath rest so that we can be as God calls us to be in the world, that we can be whole in sharing our light for Christ. Sabbath simply means to find rest from labor. And it's in the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. God is commanding us to take Sabbath, to rest. And it's clear what happens to us when we don't take the time to pull into that rest area because our minds and our bodies get so busy with the toil of labor that you can actually experience the absence of joy. If you rest your mind, explore your creativity, step away from your normal physical labors, you will experience enhanced spiritual rest. Sunday does not have to be the day that you choose to rest. In our busyness of life, Sunday has become less and less a protected day for rest. But whatever fits into your calendar for rest is what I want you to be thinking about today as we talk about Sabbath rest. Because it's an important thing to fit into your lives. We can all attest that when you go through extremely difficult things, your body indicates to you that you even need more rest than you did before. Jesus' actions and teaching us show us that rest remains vital. He identified Sabbath as a time that people can experience God's presence and celebrate their redemption. God's desire for us has not changed. And God still wants us to rest so that we can experience the tangible blessings of a relationship with the divine. Our challenge is to cultivate Sabbath rest. While we no longer may rest on a particular day of the week, rest should still anchor our lives. God does not intend us to be so busy with work or service or our family that we neglect that time to find renewal and celebration in him. Rest allows us time to pause and restore our soul. A few years ago, as a part of my clergy covenant with the annual conference, I was invited to participate in what the conference calls a Shemitah year. I say I was invited because this is a required event for clergy and you participate in it for a year long. They were at, we were asked to be part of a year long covenant group and clergy finally ended with a two week sabbatical from our churches. I initially resisted pretty heavily this idea of Sabbath rest. The number one fear in my head was that I was being selfish by taking this time. Secondary to that was that I didn't really feel like I needed to get away. 
I wasn't having a compelling problem that I needed to solve or a wound that I needed to heal. And I had only been in my current church appointment for about a year and a half. So I wasn't feeling burnt out or stressed out or ministry overloaded. I wasn't feeling like I needed rest. But I stepped in. And this requirement was calling to me, so I reluctantly went to that kickoff retreat. Now, while on the retreat, we spent a variety of time looking at spiritual practices and things that I had done and hadn't done before. For example, I tried watercolor painting. It didn't go well, but I also tried some breath prayers, which I had also done before, but this was a very controlled, different kind of breathing. I also tried yoga for the first time. And while these components weren't necessarily new to me, they were new practices for my body. And I realized that I could find a new rhythm to incorporate some daily rest into my life. It was fun to try something different and to learn to incorporate prayer into these practices. And when it was time to discuss what we were going to do with our two weeks away, I decided that I would spend my time hiking and camping on the North Shore by myself. I have solo hiked on the Superior Trail and I absolutely love biking or backpacking and camping. And it had been several years since I had done that kind of adventure alone. So I picked some state parks that were new to me and chose backpacking in sites. And I planned my trip around my kids' soccer schedules and marching band and summer camp and summer vacation schedules. And I was excited to hike. But if I'm really honest with you, two weeks away from people is really hard for me because I'm an extrovert and I thrive on the energy of other people. Yet, I knew this would be important to me too. And it was important to step out and take this time of rest. God shows up in unexpected places and I was not disappointed with God's presence on my trip. I was truly amazed at how much I needed that time away. I read four books on this trip and I spent some time really digging into scripture. The time ended up with being a Sabbath from work, from social media, and from family. I kept in contact with people, but the focus was really on getting away from the church work, according to our Shemitah covenant. And we were to have two consecutive weeks that we were really away. So I stayed away from work emails and phone calls and text messages and even took a break from Facebook. So I wouldn't be tempted to see all of the exciting things my church family was doing back home. This disconnection was really key to finding Sabbath rest because it allowed me to go away and let go of the everyday things that I was normally responsible for and embrace what was happening in the now moments of my trip. One of the evenings was spent at Crosby Manitou State Park. And this is a backpack only site campsite up on the North Shore, far away from cell phones and roads, even roads and any kind of connection with people. At my campsite, it was right on the Manitou River. I laid for hours on a warm rock with my feet in the water with the cool rush between my toes, staring up at the clouds and the trees swaying in the breeze. I was watching birds, listening to the different noises that were around me and seeing the cloud formations. This forced disconnection from the real world helped me to listen to God differently, to see and to hear things that I hadn't before or that I might ignore in the rush of daily life. I fill my journal with free writing and sometimes there's no clear sentence structure or topic. But later, when I went back to read what I had written on that trip, 
I found nuggets of pure joy and things that I wanted to learn more about. In my nights staying right beside the shores of Lake Superior, I found that I was captivated by the power of the water. How one evening it can go from completely calm and still to white caps crashing below. Water so loud that you could no longer hear the birds chirping around you. Going away for an extended period of time is one way to accomplish Sabbath. And it's a really good long-term habit. But I do realize it's not something that all of us can afford to fit into our daily, into our yearly schedules. What we do need to make a part of our regular rhythm is regular weekly rest practice. Sabbath rest should be in our daily rhythm and we can take our cue from God because on the sixth day, or in six days, God created the world and on the seventh day, God rested. The restorative practices you will find to fill your soul between you and God. For some reason, or for some of you, what that might be look like is a fishing trip. Maybe it's just for a day, but maybe it's a golf game or some time with friends and family. Having Sabbath doesn't necessarily mean that you are alone or that you're not doing something. In fact, it's more about doing than not doing. You are taking back part of your life in creating something that will fill your soul. And in fulfilling your soul, you become a better person to your family, your friends, and your work. You can return to your work with renewed purpose and vision. There are three key things to think about when you are planning Sabbath rest. The first, and you're doing it right now, is to anchor your week in weekly, in weekly worship experiences. Having a regular local, local church where you can experience the presence of God is worshiping with a faith-filled community. Whether we gather in person or online or some other designated time of the week, it's a solid anchor in our schedules. It helps us to cultivate restful relationships with other Christians who are working for the same good. In my professional years of ministry, what I missed the most during pandemic was this worship community. Not leading worship, I missed the opportunity to have communion with people around Christ to share our pain and our joy and to live our best lives with each other to honor Christ. Pandemic worship made me feel alone because I missed that congregational high from seeing my people every week. When you focus on balance, remember that maintaining healthy relationships with your church and community is one of the best ways and best habits that you can form. The second thing is to spend time in personal prayer and reflection. Rest should not only be a corporate thing, but an individual thing. Consider reading a daily devotional book or reading the Bible in a year. There are several wonderful apps that can help you with that. Or you can substitute different online devotions for a great, great experience. A, very, a few years ago, I dove into a devotional book that I had found on my grandmother's shelf. And this was a fascinating experience because as I looked through this book, she had written wonderful things inside this book as she journeyed through it. And I was able to journey through it at my own pace and see what kinds of things she had written along the way. It was a gift that she had given to me even though it had been several years since she had died. Sometimes it was like she was sitting right there in the room with me. Third, make your rest consistent, but not constricted. Just as it is easy to work too hard, we can also work too hard at rest. Don't be anxious if life gets in the way and disrupts your rest schedule. Trust that consistency in the long haul will provide ample time to rest and rejoice in your relationship with God. And finally, 
learned to see rest in the context of your entire life. We all experience busy seasons that tax us greatly, and sometimes rest is hard to find during a particular month. But we can manage those tough times by keeping our eyes on the big picture. As I am a full-time teacher, my summers are now filled with the majority of my rest and relaxation. And due to the summer calendar, or the school calendar, free time seems to evade me during that time, but summer allows me time to rest. And oh, that rest is so good. It's a cycle that reminds me I need to take little bits of rest time throughout my school year because I do not function well and cannot be my whole self if I am not rested. So I work to take little bits of time between being a mom, a spouse, and a teacher. Remember that God calls us to rest, not to work. He says be still, and we need to be still and listen. We cannot carry the burdens of our life without resting on God's shoulders. Perhaps right now you are running down your to-do list in your head, and it's not a good time for you to rest. But I urge you to find the time and figure out when you can rest. And it is my prayer for you that you not only seek God, but that you grow closer to God in those moments of rest. As I close today, hear these words from Matthew in the 11th chapter. Come to me, all you who are wearied and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest in your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, lover of our souls, you have made us for community, for relationships in fixed time and space, woven through common experiences, inspired by shared struggles, dedicated to common goals. We give thanks for this nation of ours, for its commitment to liberty, for the vision of its founders, for the defense of the weak, for its love of justice. We give thanks for our fellow Americans, for their goodness and generosity, for the dreams that brought us all to this land, for the genius and industry of every generation, for the tapestry of our cultural heritage, for commitments that have made many on this day of national celebration, as we mark the anniversary of this great experiment, we pray, strengthen us in our resolve to act justly, to care for the weak, to defend the persecuted, and to foster freedom and peace. When we fail, make us quick to confess our faults, strong enough to amend our ways, and mindful of the inheritance entrusted to us. And remind us all that we enjoy this land of ours for only a brief time, as a place where we do our work, delight in our families, care for our neighbors, and nurture our faith. Now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in singing our closing song, Take Time to Be Holy.
Thank you for worshiping with us today at Eden Prairie United Methodist Church. Now as you go forth out into this wonderful world, may you know that God is with you wherever you go. And may you be able to find that Sabbath rest that God is calling to you. Amen.